It is October 2024, one week before the World Championship for the Lord of the Rings trading card game. I'm Katura from the Players' Council, and this video will cover everything you need to know going into the event, whether you are a player or a spectator. First is where. As with most games of the Lord of the Rings trading card game, the World Championship is played digitally on GIMP. The tables will be closed to spectators during the actual competition. The event will, however, be streamed live on Twitch by the Players' Council with color commentary, which will later be uploaded to YouTube. And, as always, the replays and deck lists will be posted after the fact for anyone to study at their own pace on the last Homely House forums. The World Championship is divided into two events across two weekends. The group stage is on Saturday, October 19th, starting at 1300 UTC, and is where the top 32 qualified players will compete in a grueling test of skill. The top 8 best players from that event will meet again the following weekend on Saturday, October 26th at 1500 UTC for the Championship Tournament, where the World Champion will ultimately be crowned. Note the time difference between the events. This presentation will be linked in the description so you can follow these links and see what these times translate to in your particular local time zone. The group stage is a 10-round Swiss tournament with three phases. In phase number one, players will compete in Movie Block Sealed, meaning they will rip open virtual booster packs and show off their deck building chops by making a deck from scratch in 30 minutes or less. After their new decks are turned in, players will play two rounds of Swiss using those sealed decks. In phase number two, players will play four rounds of PC Fellowship using previously constructed decks. After a break for lunch, players will return for phase number three and compete in four more rounds of PC Movie, again using decks registered before the start of the tournament. We will go over the details of each of these formats later in the video. The Swiss scores of each of these performances will be contiguous, meaning that performance in earlier phases will directly impact your pairing in later phases. Once all rounds have completed, scores will be tallied according to the PC Tournament tiebreaking system, which we will also explain later in the video, and the top 8 players will be dubbed the World Competitors and invited to return the next week. The Championship Tournament is a double elimination knockout tournament. To illustrate this, we will use the 2023 bracket as an example. Double elimination divides players into two brackets, an upper bracket and a lower bracket, based on how many times they have lost. Upper bracket games are played using PC movie decks, while the lower bracket uses PC Fellowship. Players who are undefeated remain in the upper bracket, while those who have a single loss will be shunted into the lower bracket. Any player who loses a second time is eliminated from the event. Once the field has been winnowed down to the final two, the players will compete in a best of three, starting with PC Movie. After that first round, each subsequent round will have the format decided by the loser of the previous match, meaning they can choose either to repeat PC Movie or shift to PC Fellowship as they wish. Once the final player has been eliminated, that player will be dubbed the World Challenger, and the final remaining player will be crowned the 2024 World Champion. Throughout 2024, the Players' Council has ran multiple events for players to earn an invitation to the World Championship. Earlier in the year, the PC ran three-day weekend leagues, and in August came the Format Championships, and in September we had the Walk-On Qualifiers. Winners of each of these events were invited to the 2024 World Championship, as well as a few more who won various in-person events scattered around the globe. Showing on the screen are the usernames of these final 32 contestants. If you're watching this and you see your name in red, that means you need to finish registering, so check the description for a link to that form. We need your email so we can contact you, but more importantly, we need your shipping address so that we can send you some of the prizes we have prepared. Speaking of prizes, the PC has booster packs, singles, pins, and more to award to all of our best players. Here we have some of the physical prizes which we would like to show off for you. Each member of the top 8 will receive 6 booster packs from various movie era sets, and the top 2 will also receive a sealed booster box. Next are the pins, donated from John Drinkwater. Each member of the top 8 will receive one of these, with first pick going in ranking order. Next, some of the singles on offer. Each member of the top 8 will receive a few random singles from the generously donated collection of Dale Miller. These include foils, promos, and alternate language cards. The top 8 will also once again receive custom plaques commemorating their achievement, and the champion and challenger will receive their trophies in the form of custom-made deck boxes. Also returning from last year, Category 1 Games is once again offering store credit vouchers to each of the top 8 competitors. Finally, we have the 2024 World Championship promo, which doesn't exist yet. The world champion, upon winning the tournament, will have the chance to choose and help design the promo used, meaning it could be anything. Here you can see last year's promo, Besmelis chose Goblin Runner, and we gave it the full art treatment with a brand new portrait. All players in the group stage will receive a physical and virtual copy of the 2024 promo, customized and branded with the highest tier achieved by that player. But it's not all for the competitors. During both the group stage and championship tournament, spectators can put their names in for a raffle, where additional prizes will be awarded, including individual booster packs, singles, PC promos, and more. The Players' Council is extremely grateful to the generous members of the community who have donated their talents, materials, and cards to the prize pool. 
Special thanks to Category 1 Games, Harry Duff with Custom Craft Awards, John Drinkwater, and Dale Miller. Now we will give an overview of the three formats being played at the World Championship, their role, and things to look out for. During Phase 1 of the group stage, players will be playing a modified version of Movie Block Sealed, a fan-made sealed format that has been around for more than a decade. As a sealed format, players will receive 9 fixed booster packs, being one from each movie era set except for reflections, 6 booster pack choices from that same pool, and 1 customized starter from among 9 choices. The 9 decks available can be found on the wiki. As you can see, during a normal movie block sealed league, 3 decks are offered during each series, but during this tournament players will have access to all 9. We highly recommend that competitors be familiar with the options here before the tournament begins, and to choose wisely when deciding what order to open everything in. Remember that for this phase only, cards are using the original Decipher versions. There are no PC errata during this stage. And just a word on why we are introducing Sealed. The first reason is because Sealed is a major aspect of the active competitive scene, so it only stands to reason that a world champion should be well-rounded and possess the skills to excel in Sealed as well as Constructed. There is a more practical reason as well, however. For all the strengths of the Swiss tournament format, one consistent issue is the random assignments in the first few rounds of the event. Until a match record can be built, the Swiss system is no better at assigning players than random chance. Sealed is thus a good smokescreen for that randomness, masking it behind the inherent luck of ripping open booster packs while also remaining strategic enough for skilled players to shine. On to Phase 2. During Phase 2 of the group stage, and throughout the lower bracket of the championship tournament, players will play rounds of PC Fellowship and thus will need to bring a deck suitable for that format. To those unfamiliar, PC Fellowship starts with the Decipher Fellowship block format, which is sets 1-3 through three, as a base, and adds to that the PC's own set V1 Shadow of the Past. PC Fellowship, like all PC formats, uses extensive amounts of PC errata to, to decipher cards which are used to balance and shake up the meta. The most up-to-date versions of all errata can be found on GIMP. Here it can be found up here on the Help tab, come down to PC errata, and then on this screen you can see all of the latest errata that have been performed. This screen is automatically updated whenever a change is made to GIMP. Um, this is always going to be the latest version. And so here you can see the Decipher version on the left, and you can see the PC version on the right for any particular card that you want to inspect. The wiki also contains resources for searching and browsing through these changes. In addition to these card changes, there are two rule changes for PC Fellowship that are not listed on a card. First, discard piles are considered public information, meaning that any player can browse either discard pile at any time. Second, the game does not end at the start of the regroup phase. Normally, players race to be the first player to land on Site 9, and the game ends as soon as all skirmishes are complete. PC formats permit the final regroup phase to play out, meaning that Shadow players have one final chance for a Hail Mary regroup action before the game is over. Veterans will recognize that there is a card, Caverns of Isengard, that once provided this effect, but this is now effectively a permanent fixture of all PC games. During Phase 3 of the group stage, and throughout the upper bracket of the championship tournament, players will play rounds of PC Movie using their own legal deck. Like PC Fellowship, PC Movie uses Decipher Movie as a foundation. Sets 1 through 10 are legal, as well as set V1, Shadow of the Past, and PC Errata on many cards. Unlike Decipher Movie, there is no X list as all cards previously on that list have instead been errated to curtail their particular power level issues. The same rule changes as before also apply to PC Movie. The game ends after the last regroup phase actions, and discard piles are public knowledge. PC Movie has one further change that has a large impact on how it is played, maps. PC Movie uses what is called the multipath rule set for choosing site paths. Most formats in the Lord of the Rings trading card game define a single block that players are allowed to source site cards from either Fellowship Block, Towers, or King. Multipath permits players to bring sites from any of these three movie site paths, so long as all of your sites are from the same path. To help communicate your choice and to remind yourself, players include a map card whose only purpose is to, is to declare which particular site path it is that you're using. To make things a little more interesting, the map card is revealed before the game begins, even before bidding, which means you and your opponent have a little more information to work with when making that initial bid. King Path is what movie has always been built on, but with the introduction of the versatile Fellowship Path and the often overlooked middle child that is the Towers Path, PC Movie has a wide range of meaningful choices to offer its players. Now for procedures. Each game will have a game clock of 20 minutes per player, meaning that games will have a maximum runtime of 40 minutes. This maximum is unlikely but possible as it requires both players to run their clocks quite low. 
Each player's clock will tick down while the game waits for you to make a decision, so don't take too long. Players can allocate up to 10 minutes of their clock to any single decision. This also applies to the initial connection. If players have not connected to their tables after 10 minutes, they will automatically concede. There will always be a 10 minute break between rounds, so that even the players of the longest games each round can catch a breather and prepare themselves for the next game. At about the halfway mark of each event, there will be an hour break for lunch, which during the group stage, this is between phase two and three, and during the championship tournament, this is after the lower bracket has concluded and the top two have been decided just before the finals. Speaking of lunchtime, during the lunch break of the group stage, the PC will have a special exhibition match between two playtesters who will show off two decks built using set V2, King of the Golden Hall. We encourage everyone to tune in at least for that to catch a sneak peek of the future of the game. Now for tiebreakers. The PC has over time developed its own set of tiebreakers to use for tournament play. Traditionally, GIMP utilized opponent win percentage, but while this works for leagues, it has major flaws when used for tournaments, an environment with fewer games played and fewer opponents overall. Let's go over the PC tiebreaker set in detail. The first tiebreaker is the head-to-head -head check. If two or more players have the same score, then the match history is checked to see if those players faced off during the tournament. If they did, then the winner of that match is considered the winner of the tie. If players did not face off, or if there is a face-off loop between three or more tied players, then we move to the second tiebreaker, Modified Median. Modified Median is a system that sums up the scores of all your opponents and then drops one or two of those matches from that sum depending on context. For the purposes of high-level play, this typically results in dropping the lowest score, which acts to smooth out issues such as a score against an opponent who drops out early from the tournament. After Modified Median, we move to the third tiebreaker, Cumulative Score. Cumulative is a system that sums up a running tally of the player's round-to-round -round score, meaning that it considers early wins more important than later wins, to once again address the issue of Swiss being too random at the start of the matchup. Finally, if all else fails, we fall back on good old opponent win percentage, which is simply the total opponent scores divided by the total opponent games played. This method works best when there are lots of opponents with very different performance, which is true for casual events, but not true in Swiss. As the fourth tiebreaker, it does its job well enough. Other rules and procedures. Competitors may not watch the live stream or receive information laundered through somebody who watched it. If we discover you have violated this rule, you will be immediately disqualified. One major difference to the procedure from the 2023 World Championship is that deck lists and replays for the group stage will be released as soon as that event is over. This means that the top eight competitors will have one week to inspect their competition and alter, or not alter, their decks accordingly. Let the mind games begin. If any card bug occurs in GEMP for anything short of a crash, that bug will be treated as final for the purposes of legality. Players are encouraged to test their decks beforehand and report any bugs they discover to the PC so we have a chance to address them before the event. Other rules and procedures can be found on the World Championship page on the PC website. This concludes the primer on the 2024 World Championship. We hope that this has been informative. If you continue to have questions, please ask on the Players' Council Discord so that we can clear things up for you. To all spectators, we hope you will join us as we watch these players compete, and to the competitors, we salute you. Good luck, and may the best dwarf win.